So in this video, I'm gonna look at putting some Cat5 cable in, a cable that we would be using at home, say for instance, to go from the router, and in this case, we're going out to a faceplate, but it could be that you hardwire straight into your games console, smart TV, or home entertainment system. So on one end, we've got an RJ45 connection. On the other end, we've got a faceplate to facilitate a patch cable. So this cable can go from the plate and into the back of your games console. So we're gonna look at the technique required to make off the RJ45 end and the faceplate end as well, using a slightly different tool at that end. We're gonna be using four pair, and these pairs are twisted. Okay, so we've got four pairs. There's actually eight conductors. And we're gonna look at how they are connected in the RJ45 end and how they're connected in the faceplate as well. The conductors are twisted, so pairs are twisted together to reduce the interference created by larger voltage cables. This is classed as band one. Band one AC voltage range is zero to 50, and DC is zero to 120. This is band one. What we don't want to do is find that a magnetic field created by something such as PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables, in other words, twin and earth. So PVC twin and CPC cables, PVC twin and earth, I know I've called it in a couple of video presentations just so you're aware of what it is can cause a magnetic field around disc conductors that interfere with the conductors on the Cat5 or data side. This is classed as band two and is an AC voltage range from 51 to 1000. The magnetic field set up by these conductors is stronger than the magnetic field set of those. Therefore, we can create cross torques or hums in the lower voltage cables, which can cause interference. So we're trying to reduce that. The other way in which we reduce it is by not installing them in the same enclosure. For example, being I wouldn't have PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables running in the mini trunking that's housing the Cat5 cables. One being the magnetic interference between the two. The other problem is if these cables are simultaneously or together crushed, so those two cables are crushed at the same time, the higher voltage could appear into the uh, Cat5 cable, meaning your router at home or games console now all of a sudden has 230 volts appearing in it. So 230 volts appearing in your router. It's not designed to take that voltage and therefore can cause a risk of three things, shock, fire, and explosions. So let's go about making off the RJ45 end and making off the face plate in the rest of this presentation. So make off the RJ45 end first. It's imperative that we keep it up the correct way. So where we can see the goldy color connections, okay, and then we've got the clip on the back. We're always gonna have it that way round. So we can see the gold uh, connections, the eight connections that obviously we're gonna insert our cables into. So that's the way we're working. Please make sure you don't work with it the wrong way round where you're looking at the actual clip at the back. So we're always gonna work with it that way round. And then we're gonna insert our conductors in the correct sequence. Hopefully that's flashed up at some point during this presentation so you can see the correct sequence or look on the internet and it will tell you the colour coding and the order in which they go at. I'm also going to use an RJ45 crimping tool. So we're going to use this crimping tool to secure the connections into the RJ45. It uses cable displacement where the pressure is pushed down onto the conductors and it pinches through the insulation to make its connection. There's no stripping away of the outside uh, conductor insulation to make connections here. It uses cable displacement in order to make the connection into the RJ45, the same as it will do into the faceplate. I'm going to use my knife to take off the outside insulation around the Cat5 cable. I know some people use a specialist tool, but I'm going to use a knife, taking off uh, way more than I'm going to need uh, to go into the actual RJ45, but it makes it easier to orderise the conductors in a moment. So press quite firmly with this knife, score around, not saw, just score around the conductors itself, conductors and insulation, sorry. And then hopefully it will re remove from the cable, okay? Exposing the four paired conductors. Okay, so four pairs, so meaning eight conductors in total, but four pairs. Next, I'm gonna untwist them all and keep them nice and straight, so detwist them. Okay, and then I'm gonna make sure they're nice and straight as well. So detwist the conductors. Okay, and just run my fingers through to make sure they're nice and straight. So detwisting my conductors, and now we can look at putting them in the appropriate sequence in the next stage. My first one is 
going to be difficult for you to see, but it's orange and white, which is that one there. So you're going to pull it to one side and keep it dead straight. So I pulled it to one side. The next one is orange. So I'm going to lay that on the top. So take it longer than I need it and lay it on the top. And the next one is green and white. Very difficult to use to see, but green and white. Take it out, pull it along the top, laying it on top of the three. So now I've got three laying on top of each other as we go. The next one across is blue. Again, I'm sure it's difficult for you to see, but the colour is blue. Get the blue one out, lay it on top of the others. Nice and straight. The next one across is white and blue. So pick up the white. White and blue next, laying it on top of the others. The next one is solid green on top of the others. To the side. And then the next one is um, white and brown. And finally brown. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is lay them on top of each other. So then when I pull them back in and straighten them out, I've got them in the right sequence moving forward. It might be a time just to have a little look in now, just to check you're in the actual right sequence at that stage. So I'm happy I've confirmed my sequence, whether I've had to fiddle or move a couple around. I'm happy that I've confirmed my sequence. I'm going to cut them back to about, I don't know, 12, 14 millimetres of the conductor. So I'm keeping them nice and straight, nice and flat, before I pinch them and then cut them back. Required length. So I'm going to use so I can see what I'm doing for the camera. I'm actually going to use a, use a pair of pliers for this. Okay, so conductors are now trimmed back to the desired length and hopefully I can confirm they're in the right order before inserting them into the RJ45 end. Next we slide on the RJ45 end, remembering that we've got the gold connections at the top section as we slide it into position. And it should go relatively easy, believe it or not, into the actual positions it needs to sit in. They sort of find their way home. So it just slid straight on there. You can see the outside uh, insulation or mechanical protection on the cable will be the bit that will be pinched similar to a cord grip um, in a 13 amp plug top. And we'll use cable displacement when we squeeze down on these in order to make the electrical connection. The next stage just requires us to put it into the crimping tool for the cable displacement, making sure we've got it around the right way. It's fully inserted. Put it into the crimping tool, make sure the cable's pushed in, and then just crush it up. Okay. We won't know at this stage, other than a quick look at it, whether we've actually got our conductors in the right order until we do the final test. On the faceplate end, I've taken off. It's already colour coordinated on the back, so we've got our orange, uh, white and orange, blue, white and blue, etc. So we're already colour coordinated there, so you haven't got to really remember uh, the sequence this time and I've stripped back my conductors I just now need to detwist them and use now in this case a punch down tool in order to use the cable displacement that occurs so in other words these little V marks here again we don't strip the insulation off as we've forced it down into there the conductor itself cuts into the the V of that connection so in other words it uses cable displacement the conductor is forced into a reasonably sharp part where it opens up the insulation to make the connection this stage is relatively quickly, so if I take the first one, the first one being white and blue, they say to keep the cables as short as you possibly can in here, so I will do so, so put it in. Got a pair of scissors, this side that trims the cable off and this bit that makes the cable displacement through the, the actual connection itself. So hold it into position, uh, run her awake, and through we go, and it should cut off the actual outside of it. I didn't quite catch it that time, so let's try again. Okay, you see it's cut it away. Next one is blue. Again, it says to keep it reasonably short. Into position, correct way around. And again, didn't quite catch it, cut it off. So I've got the best tool in the world here. Okay, and away it goes. Next one is white and orange. Get into position. Scissor part once. There we go. Next one is orange. Moving across this side, we go for brown first. Followed by white and brown. Up 
put up a green. And finally white and green. Okay, made that look re relatively tricky for an easy job. So our connections are in, cables are really short, I've been told that by a BT engineer that to keep those really short, faceplate can go back on and then we can uh, perform the test to prove we've got continuity of the conductors and that they're in the correct sequence. So with any installation, once we've installed it, before we do anything else, we need to test it. We've got a cable tester here, splits off, walk off with one section, take it down to the faceplate. It's obviously going to be in a different room or some distance away from the RJ45 end. I've used a patch cable. I'm just going to connect it into it at one end. So that's at one end of the installation. And then we come back down to possibly where the route is going to be and we connect the other half in. And what it does, it runs through a little sequence then uh, of lights going from one down to, to eight in order to prove the eight conductors are all continuous and they're also in the correct position or in the correct sequence within the RJ45 end and faceplate as it runs through that test. So once the installation is finished, as with any of the jobs we do here in the workshop, we must test it before handing it over to the customer.